Welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we are going to change the input seal on my 2006 Peterbilt 378 and give me an update on the shop. Maybe clean it up a little bit. Probably should. Welcome back to the shop. So today's project, <laughs> I got I got some parts. I got some hoses and this is exciting. I have the right Holland fifth wheel parts to finally get this air ram back in um, and paint it and everything, whew, everything is dusty now because you know what? Dad's been busy on stubby, you know, give him a little stretch actually that's a pretty good example the stretch so but today oh i did something else look what i did <laughs> i came in after work and i torqued my lug nuts and i put the hub caps that were on um low and slow on and i like it a lot of you like the blue and don't get me wrong i like the blue hubs too but i just i really like these big chrome caps so oh she's looking fine and a lot of you have said in the other video um mike maybe you had this turned wrong and i think they might be right i think i had it like this so it was like that and i think it might need to go like that so that's what we're gonna do and i should paint these i mean i don't know if i need to paint these i mean i don't know if it'd look cheesy yellow oh who are we kidding it would look awesome yellow because you know cat engine and all that good stuff so that's what I'm gonna do and look at this I picked up some airbags for dad and he's got airbags in the front axle the bolts all done up in the front axle of stubby and shock absorbers shocking I know I was shocked too um and he's putting the torque rod in now that's spaced out because of the double frame and that's not, I wonder, I don't know what he's doing there, but um, we still have to do back here. And dad is doing a scientific laser level wheel alignment with the come along. Actually, there's no lasers involved. This is old school, man. This, this is how you do it in the old school. You use a come along. Get out your old tape measure and get down into your eighths of an inch and sixteenths of an inch. But uh, but yeah, so that's what we're doing. <laughs> well, actually, I'm not doing this at all. Dad's doing all of this. But because um, I would like to say that Stubby is Dad's truck. So Dad's truck. Dad's deciding what we do, which is why it's not just a single axle. Because I kind of decided that it should be a single axle. And Dad's like, no, Mike, it should be a tandem axle it's got dual lockers and and it just looks better so that's what we did we got the seam right here so if it breaks in half we only lose half of it it did still yeah you know, it still go forward but uh, a lot of people didn't understand that but dad did not want to do a join up here and whack the frame and if we want to make it a single axle it's it's still easy to do but um this truck needs a lot of work and good news i've been struggling oh i know it's not shocking mike you've been struggling i've been struggling with mental health um no that wasn't what i was gonna say i'm just looking i'm just looking in the frame uh yeah we i want i want to get this frame cleaned up before dad puts a transmission in so because you know sometimes dad jumps jumps ahead with things and is like let's go and <laughs> charging ahead and Hey, there's oil there. Oh, right, dad wants to change oil in the backhoe. <laughs> Whew, I didn't have to buy that oil, thank goodness. Um, but anyways, although I probably should pay for the oil for his backhoe, because you know, he helps me out a lot. And I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for him. So you know what, dad, if you're watching this, I thank you. 
I know I sometimes don't say it. And you know, I know as a child, you know, I may have used all your tools and sometimes didn't put them back, but I'm pretty sure it's payback now. <laughs> Anyways, um, now I forgot what I was saying, but, uh, uh, oh yeah. So I, I really would like to get the, uh, the frame cleaned up before dad does that, but I got other trucks I'm working on. And the reason why, you know, dad's doing his thing on that is because I consider that dad's truck and I got six other trucks to work on. <laughs> yeah. You know, I said six, which means I have oop, oop, seven. Do I need seven? Of course I need seven. What kind of a question is that? <laughs> when opportunity knocks, you got to open the door and look at this, a nice shop ornament right now, a 3406 A model from a 359. That's right. If you watched the last video, you know, we picked up the 1977 359 short hood, fiberglass hood, log truck, and we're going to get it going, but probably not today. Maybe today, but dad's not here and I've got to wait for dad. And you know, I got this truck in the way. And the other thing I was thinking I should do is transfer some fuel. But in order to do that, I had to make this truck move and I can't make it move right now because I pulled the drive line out. So, and there's no heater hoses in it because you know, from the episode before the last episode or the episode before the last episode before the last episode, we took the heater lines off and I boinked my, my forehead, but it's, is it gone? I think it is. Anyways, enough talking, Mike. <laughs> Boy, you know, I love to talk. Um, let's get jiggy with it. Oh, and before I forget, before I forget, and I can not forget this big shout out ah, to one of y'all. And I can't remember your name and I'm sorry about that. Maybe I should check Instagram. I think that's how you contacted me, but I can't really remember. Um, that, that got a frame step, <laughs> got a frame step for me. Thank you so much. So now I can put a frame step on Duke. And if I look, it could go uh, right like that. I can pick up those two holes. I have to cut the huck bolts off and then I have to drill two holes. But how convenient is that? There's a grab handle there. There's a step there. There's a little battery box there. And I still have room where I could put chain hangers there if I decide to put chain hangers there one day. But I don't really want to put chain hangers there right now because I got chain hangers over there. And I don't plan on using chains all the time, which is why I don't need them on both sides. Whew. Oh, so. That's exciting. It'd be kind of nice if I could pick up those bolts, but the, the kicker is if I put it here, it's, gosh, it's so close. So close, but not, not close enough. Cause I think those holes are different. And just like that, those are different. And if I go like that, actually, if I go like that, Ooh, that's pretty, it's still, it's like crooked. I wonder if that's bent. It does, it is, it is bent. So I could, wow, now there's a thought. Cause it would be nice to pick up holes that are already there and not have to drill any more holes. So I can't, well, I can't use that one because that's a, you know, there's, there's a bolt there. So do we put it there or do we put it here? I think we put it here, you know, cause then you can leave this clear for, for whatever. Maybe we decide to do full fenders. Maybe we decide to do half fenders. Maybe we decide to do, you know, individual fenders. I don't know. Um, also in the last episode, a lot of you thought, hey Mike, this is rubbing on the drive shaft. No, nope, it's not. It comes up and the drive shaft is right there. So, and I apologize for the strobe light effect. I've got a light going on the goof and I don't have a ladder here. Oh, I have a ladder. That means there's a ladder right there. <clears throat> Excuse me. But to get up there, I'm going to need a step ladder. So what I'm thinking is I do have a little thing on a stick, like a hook on an aluminum rod to change my direction of my ceiling fans, which I probably, I probably should actually change the direction of those right now because I think they're sucking up. So there's another project. I should change those. Cause in the winter you want them blowing down in the summer, you want them sucking up. So, but that strobe light is going to drive us all crazy. Although last time I turned the light on and off and maybe that'll work. <laughs> See, I, I labeled them bay two, although they are getting dirty. So I'll shut it off. Turn it on. It's working. Question is, will it stay working? Nope. It's blinking again. Dang it. Oh, on a shtick. Ooh. Ah. One of the things I did when I built 
the shop is I wired in plugs so if a light went out I could change it. Problem is they don't make these lights this way anymore. Well, let's do this. Go here. I go. Ha! I know. Friggin' brilliant. The other thing I did when I built this shop is you'll notice the side lights are the same style light. So my plan was if I have a light go on the fritz, like that one just did, I can just rob one of the side lights and get a different bar light for the side because they're easy to get to. But you know I got these when I built the shop? Costco, yeah, they were like 40 bucks. It's a lot cheaper than, you know, getting the fancy schmancy ones. Maybe the fancy schmancy ones would have lasted longer, but you know, these work just fine. Well, right up until this one quit working. All right, guys, I know I said that I was going to uh, do that seal right away, but I don't know where dad put the socket. I know he had one or he got one or he has one. I'm guessing it's in his pickup and he's not here. So I'm gonna paint some stuff first. And in order to do that, I gotta clean it up. So I did this. Does this seem like a bad idea? I think it does actually, but we're gonna give it a whirl. <laughs> I mean, how bad could it be? Bigger is better. Of course, maybe I should put it in a drill. It's got a little bit of vibration. I'm telling you, I'm having the worst luck with these die grinders. We're gonna give this a go. It's not as fast, but it's working. All right. So now I've uh, kind of cleaned it up with my wire wheel and I'm just gonna give it a little brake clean wipe down. And then we're gonna tape off these ends cause I don't wanna put paint on the, you know, where the water is gonna seal or where the hoses are gonna seal. And uh, we'll make it yellow cause you know, There, I'll tape it, paint it, and move on to the next one. So I'm gonna spray paint it outside so I don't get overspray on everything because, you know, I done that before. And I taped a wire to it so that I can hang it up. And you know, I have some hay wire, but I don't know where I put it. I know, <laughs> it's, maybe I'm getting old. Oh yeah, that's gonna look way better. Better! Maybe I'll let that hang and, uh, and then we'll put another coat on because I'm starting to get a couple of runs because we're getting a little heavy on the paint. Okay, so I got both of those pipes uh, painted with the first coat. Um, I started to get a little bit of a run, so I stopped, but you can see it's a little bit light in spots. So we'll let that dry and uh, Tack up a little bit more and then we'll hit it with another coat. And uh, next I wanna paint these brackets because if you ever looked at an old Holland slider, these things are always rusted to bejeebers. So we're gonna paint them. Now the question is, do I paint them blue or do I hit them with some black? And I was gonna do it blue and I thought, you know what? I should just do black because, well, they're already black and it's gonna dry faster. The other thing I wanna do, and I didn't do it yesterday because I totally forgot, is get some color match spray bombs that um, you can get mixed up. And then that way I don't have to like mix a whole spray can full of paint to, uh, to touch this up to make it the same color. So I can get a spray bomb of the exact same color to touch up my brush on trim clad rust paint. So anyways, I'm gonna hit these with some black paint and then uh, maybe I'll put them on this box that came with that, that other stuff. And uh, I got some garbage in it, but that's okay. We will, uh, we will get this sorted. Oh, you're here. Oops, Dad's here. <laughs> and I'm tripping over cords. I'm gonna do some presents. Ooh, I like presents. What, what, what? A long pipe. Easy on the paint now. Ooh, there's the socket. I was just telling him that I couldn't do this because this was probably in your pickup. Oh, 
I don't know if you need the adapter or not. I don't. But if you have to use a one inch impact, then you need the adapter. Mm -hmm. I don't have a one inch impact. I do, it's sitting on the bench, but I don't oh. know if the compressor is big enough to. Well, we'll try it the, uh, the hotter way. And this is just what I had in my. Your trickle trunk? Yeah. It's always good to have a trickle trunk. I. Oops. What a new. Well, I picked up a new air dryer. I haven't put it on yet. Yeah. I uh, I was gonna save on the the money and not get it, and then Doug at work says, "Oh, I ordered you, or your air dryer cartridge is in," and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> okay," <clears throat> but because uh, it's like a hundred bucks, mm -hmm. but it's a Bendix one, not a TRP one, and it's like, you know what? I think this truck deserves to have clean air. I don't know how. Anyway, so I got an air dryer cartridge. Oh, yeah. <sighs> and it's even Bendix blue. It's almost the right color, but not quite. I thought about painting it black, but maybe I'll just leave it alone. Just leave it alone. But I just have to figure out how to change that. <clears throat> and I'm painting my pieces for the slider as well as my heater pipes. I'm painting yellow because cat. Did you see what I got down here? I did. I should have got you to get me some two inch bolts instead of two and a half, but no well. Well, we can get two and a half too. Well, no, two. It's just that some of these are a little bit on the long side. Uh. But. Well, as long as they don't bottom out. Oh no, no, they're not bottoming out. But. All I've got in the front rear end to do is hook up the transverse torque rod, of which you can see it's not going quite according to plan, but. Well, I was a little confused because there's bolts in it, but. Well, if you notice, like I measured and the axle is sitting just about, in, not quite in the right place, but the spacer's got to go between the transverse torque rod and the housing. Because of the frame. Like well, the because of the distance, eh? Like, because both sides got to be the same. Yeah. So. But I was wondering if it's faced out because we've got the insert there, which moves the transverse torque rod over. Yeah. Which would be why you'd need a spacer there. Yeah, it could be. AKA. Part of it. Part of it. Washer. Part of it. Washer. And it's just one of those. Annoying. Also, I need some nuts for the uh, shock absorbers. I need four more of these washers. I guess we let them go with the the old shock absorbers when we threw them in the garbage. And they don't come with new ones? No, they don't come with that washer. So I have four of them, so I managed to get the one for the front axle on. So. That's why you should never throw your parts out until you know you're done with them. And then I drilled the holes in the frame for the airbag and then sucked the insert in and the holes didn't line up, so I had to redrill them. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, I just... I think we should put... Because those look like they're bottomed out on the shank. Because that's a lot of thread there. Yeah. But there wasn't... Well, I was going to say, wasn't there more stubby bolts? But I guess... I used them all. Mm. Well, we'll have to get more because the bolts really weren't that expensive. I think I spent $57 on bolts, which is okay. cheap. Yeah. So we'll get the right ones just to make yeah, sure they're... Inch. See, I... the long ones are okay here because we'll probably put an angle iron on the top here. For yeah. Putting a fifth wheel on. So the top one's going to be long, but the bottom one's that... Should be a little... looks hokey for no other reason than it just looks hokey. And then we got a bunch of holes up there to fill. And... Yeah. So... I actually thought about getting a bolt bin guy to bring us a bolt bin, but that's expensive. You gotta be expensive. careful with them because then they fill you with a whole bunch of bolts you'll never use. Yeah. I can't wait to get this thing all buttoned up and then sandblast it and paint it. Yeah. Because it needs a sandblast. And we'll take it to mm -hmm. the guys that I can't remember the name of that painted Duke to paint it. So I was just thinking. I don't know how we're going to get the leveling valve to work because remember when we pulled the deck off, the leveling valve went with it. Mm -hmm. I don't know which. I know one air. I know this air hose here. 
is the main feed because we blocked it off. <laughs> Be fine. <laughs> but I don't know where the other lines go. It's this fine. one here is one that I don't know where it goes. I can't. Well, remember. and there was extra. I think there was extra PTOE type lines. Yeah, I don't know. Well, and I want to before we put the transmission in, I want to clean up that frame. Yeah. Because uh, now's the time to do it before the tranny goes in. Yeah. First, we got to get that other transmission out. Yeah. Unless so, we put the 18 in and you build another one. True. So this is what we're thinking, guys. I know. I know. I said we're making a single axle. We're putting the 18 speed and that's it. But you, scatterbrain, whatever, indecisive, whatever you want to call it. Dad was thinking maybe we should take the new 18 speed, put it in Smokey, since Smokey's going to be your show truck show truck and it's newer because it's a well actually it's not that much newer than this one it's a 96 so it's a couple years newer and then take the 13 speed out of that one and put in here because this one had a 13 speed but then that one has a 13 speed but you know which which should we put the 18 speed and then if we put the 13 speed in that one because i'm probably gonna have to pull that engine out i mean i could tear it down in the truck maybe i could rebuild it i don't know but it needs a lot of work so i don't know or do we just put it in here because we have to put it, you know, maybe, maybe we should just put it in here because if we put it in there, then we have to get a new drive shaft for there. Mm -hmm. Whereas if we put it in here, we got to get a new drive shaft anyways. Yeah. And if we need another Regardless one. Regardless of what we put in here. I'll just talk to my guy about getting another, another tranny if I need it. It's just the only reason that it, it just, we need another 1810 yoke, fine spline yoke. But I mean, mm -hmm. that's not a big deal. Just money fixes that. <laughs> <laughs> well, either way, I'd probably need it for that one too, so. Well, it's hard to say. No. That one might be a fine spline or a coarse spline because it's a 13. Yeah, but this, oh, this one had a 13B. Yeah. Which they don't make anymore. But anyways. So that's what's happening with that one. Now, back to our regularly scheduled program. See if we can pull the nut off. Okay, where's the big impact? I'll just lean over the top and try it. I think it's gonna work. with a pipe. I wonder if I should put, uh, put it down. Probably not enough. Let's just do it over. And I'll, uh... <clears throat> you want to come over and pull? <laughs> Sliding it down the bar a bit. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> I guess it'll need. Well, yeah. Or something.
slide it down on the bar a bit. get the heat more centered on the nut instead of getting everything hot. The other thing you just cut cut it off. Yeah. What you do is just cut each side. Be very careful. And you can do it. Because that's the only way it's going to go. I think. I know that's the way I got the other one off, was just cut it. Yeah. But you gotta be, like it won't cut through two layers easy, but it will, will cut it if you're not careful. Yeah. But you can, take it right to the other side, or however you want to do it. It's just a matter of being careful, that's all. Yeah. It'll, it'll only cost you a pinion gear if you screw up. <laughs> I would say get down in there, under there, and... Yeah. I'm just going to see if I can find the goggles. part of it too. I was gonna try with the impact because I could hear it popping. <sighs> Which maybe is a dumb idea but well will the socket even fit on it though?
but not really. That was easy. Well, that was easy. <laughs> I'd say more shit I was left. <laughs> well, hey, I'll take it. <laughs> pretty much. That seal looks pretty. Pretty gunji. Pretty gunji, man. Pretty gunji. Is that coarse or fine slime? Fine. It's fine, man. Okay. Now, how does this seal look? So it goes in like that. Ooh, it's got grease on it too. So this, that's the race it goes on there. So maybe I could just pry it out. Okay, let's get a pry hook thingy. Where's the hook? I think I need a bra. Like a glove. Here we go. Whew. Is it hard? Not really. Not really. It almost feels swollen, but. Something in there to clean up the dressing. <clears throat> I think it's already got a speedy sleeve on it, and it looks like it's good enough that I wouldn't change it. Okay, works for me. I would say, I mean, there's no groove in it. There's a, a bit of a black mark that's coming off. So, it's already got a speedy sleeve on, if you notice. Can you see the speedy sleeve? Mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> I've got it cleaned up. Um, cleaned up this race in here. Uh, cleaned up the outside edge just to make sure there's, you know, it's it's clean. Um, threads look good. And here is the new seal. You can see it's got the brown ring of sealant. And I don't have a seal driver, so I'm gonna try using Plastic bucket. I know, it's a great idea. Look, it fits perfect. And then I'm gonna use this. And by the power of all things plastic, I think it's gonna work. Cause I don't think you need to have a lot of force. So we're gonna give it a go. Is it gonna work? Oh, it's gonna be fine. Okay. Let's see if this is gonna work. Very gently place your seal into its location. Grab your plastic seal driver. Like so. Just give it a bit of a tap. We're already crooked. Part of the problem is I'm going in crooked now. Gee, I don't know why it's gonna be. So how do I do this? Okay guys, so what I've found, what I've found <clears throat> is a wiper for a wheel seal that uh, I'm not sure what it fits, but I got it in some stuff that I got given to me. So it fits in the seal. So I'm gonna use this to tap it since I don't have a proper seal driver. I know, it's ingenious. And you're right, the plastic bucket didn't work. Probably just as well. Ah. Okay.
So if I slip this in there like that, just give it a little Now, we just have to see if the oak fits. That worked. That worked really good. Ow, ow. That worked really good, guys. So what I did is, this way it kept wanting, it didn't want to go as well. So I turned it around like that. Much better. Okay. Which way I, did I have it up? I know it doesn't really matter 100%, but I'd like it to be as close to the way it was as we can make it. There. Now, Okay, so I just put a little bit of blue Loctite on there. I don't know if that's the right thing to do, but that's what I did. Um, and I found online that you need to torque it to 880 to 1,000 foot-pounds of torque. Now, I have a torque wrench that goes to 500, and it's got a bar about that long. So I think if I use the pipe again and give it a couple good ooga that should be about the same as, you know, 1,500 foot-pounds of torque because gun show! No, but seriously, I think uh, I think a bit of a bar pull, eh, you know, about six feet should work. You know, like that much. So, let's tighten this up. Righty tiny, a lefty loosey. So now, if I do this, oops. I get on the outside. We'll give it some ooga doogas. <laughs> I'll just throw that there. Yeah. Hey. Now you want to make sure that you put your back foot back so that if the bar slips off, you don't end up on your behind. I think we got a bit. Now, we can put the drive line back in. I mean, if that didn't work. Excuse me. I think that impact when it stops is about 500 foot pounds and I think I got a little bit more, so it's good. We're gonna call it good. Okay, so <clears throat> I can use a strap again to 
pull this up. I know, not a great view. So if I do this, yeah, see, there, now, now I've got my drag line suspended. This shouldn't win me, but I mean, I know you guys aren't surprised, but um, yeah, so I'll pull that tighter. I also got a new strap kit too, because I think, I think it's a good idea to put a new strap kit on. Part sold me one, so I'm gonna need this wrench. When I say wrench, I mean socket. And what else do I need? Um, I know what I need. One of these. There we go. Okay. Straddle my drive shaft. Bit. And get my. Ah, come on. Get my foot in there. I just want to clean up my my U joint thingies. U joint kit specifications. Spacklefications. I'll turn the torque down on my impact. I'll just zip them up. Done like dinner. And really that's it. I don't, I don't have to do anything other than, uh, you know, check the tightness, maybe grease my U-joint. But uh, yeah, let's get this fifth wheel back together because my part should be dry now. So I think this works pretty easy. Um, famous last words. My new cylindre. Cylindre. Um, so we take these doohickeys, we slide these in first. So put one of these on each side. And then put a spring over and I'm probably going to need, and then you put this thing over and then what you do is you compress all this and drop a pin in. Now the only kicker is it means I gotta, I need to compress that spring. How am I going to do that? Need like a spring compressor. Oh, and when I do that, the other thing I need to do is put my cylinder in. <sighs> so I need a springing compressor. So yeah, like when you drop this in, this will go through the cylinder and then that goes like that. And then this will be Like that, we take our hose, go like that. Nice, neat, and nice, neat, and petite. But how am I gonna spring or shrink? Okay, we need a tool. What kind of a tool do we need? We need a spring compressing tool. We need to keep this out. 
Okay, we can do that. <clears throat> I wonder if we could do it with a ratchet strap and just put a hole in the ratchet strap. I'm gonna try that. Okay guys, I'm not saying I'm a genius, but I just had to think about it a little bit. You know how that goes. <laughs> Don't drop it. <laughs> okay. So using my strap, <clears throat> well, I was able to think about it. I have to go down now. Like that. However it needs to go. Well, it's sticking out the other end a little bit. And now, I'll release my strap. Release my strap. Strap is a little bit stuck. Not gonna lie. There. There we go, guys. Now it's in there. My fifth wheel is officially working. Well, it's officially hooked up how it's supposed to be hooked up. That's a win. Okay, so now we can hook up my little airline. Oh, this makes me really happy, guys. Just to be able to get this, you know, Nothing is ever as easy as you think. And I mean, I got a deal on it. I think I paid $100 for this, $100 for this. Of course, cut this off those other ones. So I'm into it for 200 plus bushings. That was 50 bucks, so 250. That was 300, this stuff. So yeah, 550, 600 bucks basically. Oh yeah, and I forgot the other pins, so yeah, six or seven hundred bucks. I guess it's still cheaper than buying a whole assembly. There. Gonna put this on. Oh, that was a job. Okay, now we can put the fifth wheel head on. The only problem is how am I gonna do that? Because I don't have a gantry crane. Off to get it running so we can take it outside and use the backhoe, I guess. So, but that feels good because now with that done, I think I could put the deck plates on. You know, guys, I just went outside because a customer called me, and the kicker is this building really stinks for cell phone service. So I've got a booster actually, but the booster kind of, it's on the house and the, the wind blew it over and the booster's not working is what I'm saying. And I'm bloody freezing now because I went outside and I'm talking on the phone and it's like, I don't know what the temperature is, but it's cold. It's cold is what I'm saying. I know I'm just wearing a hoodie, <laughs> but still, I didn't think it was. Okay, enough whining. Let's get back to work. So. I'm thinking of a couple things. I think I might squirt some stuff in where the, you know, to try and prevent some rush jacking. And we're gonna put the deck plates on. And we're gonna put the quarter fenders back on. I know I've called them half fenders, but the quarter fenders, not half fenders, they're quarter, because they're only a quarter of the way and a half fender goes half the way and this is only going half of the half fender, so that makes it a quarter. So, that was a lot to say. Let's go find something to spray in there. Um, I'd like to get like a rust mort, but Eh, whatever. We'll see what I got. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find some blue spray paint 
to uh, paint my caps because, you know. Oh, and I should grease it, but. Anyways, let's just get this thing together. It's time to put the quarters on. There we go. The one thing that I like, there, uh, now, <laughs> I have a bit of a gap, but the thing I like about the gap is it's easier to chain up, should a guy have to chain up. But, you know, in our country, you gotta think about these things. So you look at it, if it was a 24-5, it would be a little closer, you know. I could always make him come and grab that bolt, um, but that's gonna work. It'll work for now, is what I'm a saying. And I gotta find my little impact. I don't know where I left it. Oh, I bet I left it underneath the truck at the front, so. That looks good. Now, I think I'm gonna throw the deck plates on because you know what? At the end of the day, maybe I can pull the small one off if I need to. Ooh. Ouch. Put this here. So these have, they're quite ingenious actually. They've got a bolt and then the, the bottom side is notched. So when you tighten it, it turns them and you can clamp it down. Or no, when you turn it, it like, yeah. It turns that way and clamps it down and when you undo it, it turns it that way, so. Engineers be thinking. You know what guys? I think, I think, I think, I think. This is gonna work. Put that one there. You know what? I might have to. Because these are over top of cross members and they're they're not gonna go under that, I don't think. Well. That one it might. Maybe I just need to undo them more. <sighs> okay, well, what if we put the short one in the back? I know that works there. I think this is gonna work. I just have to, uh, maybe I'll just hold this one on with two or I move it back. So it would be nice, or would a guy like him like all the way up there? The only problem is in that circle. If we go right there, then that works. I think that's what we're gonna do. Think that's what we're gonna do. Get these suckers all lined up, just like that. So it looks pretty, and now I just need to put this step on. So, this step on. So, you know, and this is actually bent 
to go around a something or other. But if you look at it, the holes are a little bit off. But, um, and this is kind of interesting because someone custom made it skinnier. You see that? So, but we can make it work. Well, or now that I'm thinking about that, do I go like that and space that out to go around that bolt? You know what? I think I'm going to ask Dad's opinion on that one. Yeah. I was just going to change the air dryer cartridge, but I don't have a strap big enough. Oh, but look at that. <laughs> that is looking so good. Um, I think, yeah, we're either going to put the step there or we're going to put it. Oops, I guess I should. So we're either going to put the step there and pick up those bolts that are already there or we'll put it here because then it's close to the battery box. So. I'm thinking I'll probably put it closer to the battery box. Well, I don't know. Well, yeah, maybe. Well, I don't know. I'm indecisive. Uh, shocker. I have to drill two holes, but it won't be that hard to drill two holes. And I need to put the fifth wheel on. I use the backhoe right now, but it's cold. And I got to go to the Christmas party. So anyways, guys, that's it for me. See you in the next one. In this video, <laughs> welcome back to Mike's Garage. My name is Mike, and this is my garage. Well, this is actually Mike the Truck Nuts Garage, so.